Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Evan and welcome back to my channel for yet another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to texture models and characters, weapons, etc. Anything that you've extracted from Call of Duty using my previous tutorials. Um, specifically, I'm going to be going over my workflow when I'm uh, extracting and texturing files from Modern Warfare 2023, Modern Warfare 3, even other games too. Like, honestly, a lot of different AAA games and even, you know, not AAA games use mostly the same-ish techniques um, texture-wise, like PBR texturing and whatnot. So this tutorial should be fairly universal. So I hope that you learned something. And uh, I even made this uh, quick little animation as an example. Uh, it'll be posted at the same time that this goes up. I don't expect to get any views or anything. It's just like an example animation that I had fun putting together over the course of like a week. But uh, you can see here, it's made entirely out of, you know, animations extracted from Warzone that I uh, put into Blender, textured and everything. I uh, had a ton of fun making. And you can see, like, an example of, like, the, the level of quality that you can expect following this tutorial and whatnot. So, you know, if this is something that you're remotely interested in, please consider subscribing and or liking the video. I'd appreciate it a lot. Also, if you do really like these videos, I did go ahead and make a coffee account, which is basically like Patreon, but a little bit cooler in my opinion, just in case you're feeling generous. But uh, I really do love making these videos, and without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, first things first, we need a, you know, model to texture. So, you know, following the previous tutorials and whatnot in three, two, one. And look at that, easy peasy. Also, Call of Duty just started an update. Fun. And you can see here we have the model for Homelander. I feel like he's a really good example character, but um, yeah, let's go over into the shading tab. Now, right off the bat, we're going to see that he looks pretty ugly, and that's because we need to fix his textures um, using Caught Image Util, which is an application that's going to be linked right in the description. Pretty simple. Go straight to the GitHub. Go to the releases and download the latest zip and then we're gonna unzip it wherever we need it so just download open up preferably you know wherever you have greyhound is usually an easy spot so let's go over there all right this is my greyhound folder and i actually already have it right here i made a new folder called it giu for game image util and then i just dragged in the zip and extracted it here and simple as that now you can just open it and Boom, right here. This is where the magic happens. So what we're gonna do is if you're extracting models from Modern Warfare 3 slash Warzone, I've found that the best options are, we're gonna start off with COD spec slash gloss RGB slash A multiple CODs. Uh, leaving it on automatic will work for, you know, sometimes, but I have gotten the best results specifically with Warzone models by setting it to this. So what we're gonna do next is open up our folder with our character textures in there. So, you know, you can find that under Greyhound. And then if you go to the character, in this case, it's Homelander's body, go into there, go into the images. Uh, so long as you're using the same Greyhound settings as me, which I'll put up on the screen right now. Um, and then we're gonna see a lot of these. And some of them look really weird. Like this is supposed to be a body texture, but if we click on it, it's mostly transparent. But uh, what's going on here? And also you see that the transparency aligns with the parts that are showing up as black on the model. And what's going on here is it's actually compressing or overlapping different textures into a single image texture that, you know, saves space and whatnot. And what COD Image Util is gonna do is it's gonna split it apart into its respective textures. So right here, what should just be a color texture actually contains the color and I believe metallic uh, textures and we're going to be splitting it apart and i'm going to explain to you what all these different textures do do not worry so make sure that you have it set to specifically either automatic if you're using a different call of duty you might have to do some trial and error which setting to use i know older call of duty sometimes you don't even need to do this but um now what we're going to do is drag in all of the color textures with that setting on. So the textures you're going to want to select are the RGB, you know, normal color looking images, not the blue purpley ones. Those are called normal maps and we're going to save those for later. So select all of the color images. Note, I'm skipping over these, uh, you know, thermal, I'm pretty sure textures. Therefore, you know, like certain scopes and stuff in the game, we want the color textures. And I'm just clicking and control clicking all of the different ones, which we're just going to drag into COD Image Util. Make sure you get all the weird looking transparent images too, because this is going to fix them. So, you know, select all of those, make sure we have Game Image Util open, and it's set to the right setting, and we're just going to drag those in. Like I said, don't bring in the purple ones yet. And once that happens, we're going to see that this undid a lot of stuff, and now we have our textures. Okay, so here we can see the glove textures from before. They were showing up as really, really dark. Only only the gold parts were showing up, and that's just 
incorrect and not how they should be rendered. But we can see here if we just scroll to the side, what we have is a black and white texture. This is a this is a metallic texture. I'll explain the differences in a minute. Don't worry. But then we have the actual color texture, which were both smooshed together into the color map. So you know, we're one step closer to having a good looking character just with that. Now we're gonna do the same thing, but with all these weird purpley textures, which are called normal maps. So what we're gonna wanna do is go back into game image util, COD image util, they're the same thing. Now we're going to change it to COD normal slash gloss slash occlusion infinite warfare slash modern warfare. I've gotten the best results with this when extracting and texturing warzone textures. So just select that and we're gonna do the same thing. Click, control, click all of the purple weird looking textures. All right, I think that's everything, and drag them in. And it's gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna get actually three textures out of each one of these. So we're gonna look at that momentarily. Now the gloves, for instance, this is what they looked like before. This is not what a normal map should look like. This is like a very off bluish purple, like cyan almost? I don't know what color this is, but it's not, it's like an ugly purple and blue. Um, what it's actually supposed to look like is not this, but this, this is a normal map. It's like, you can tell by the bright poppy purples with like little bits of blue, little bits of pink. Uh, this is what a normal map should look like. So that's how you know that you did it right. And then also it's gonna split apart into the roughness map, otherwise known as specular map and the occlusion map. Oh, my camera just died, one second. Alrighty, the camera is back on and I'm just gonna show you what all five of these textures do, what they're for, and how to apply them in Blender really quick. Now let's just start with the torso here. If we just click over here, we can see a preview in the corner of which texture it is, obviously. And we just need to drag that in. Also, I might use Node Wrangler a couple times in this, so if you wanna follow along, all I'm doing sometimes is I'll press uh, Control Shift in order to preview a certain node and just go into Edit uh, preferences and then add-ons and search for a node wrangler make sure it's enabled if you want to follow along in that way it's not necessary but I think node wrangler is really cool and everyone should be using it but uh, let's go ahead and drag in our torso textures starting with the color which we can see uh, right here which is this is the one that's currently in blender but we split it apart so right here is the color slash diffuse texture this is you know it, it's super self-explanatory. So what we're gonna do, I don't need to go into detail with this one. We're just gonna drag it into Blender and replace the old terrible looking one. And boom, we're already way ahead of the curve. This looks 10 times better. And since that one's self-explanatory, we can just jump right into the next one, which is, which one should we do? Next up, which is the other most easy texture to identify and apply, in my opinion, is the normal map. The funky looking, really purple texture that everyone loves. Um, we're just gonna drag this in as well, and it's actually really awesome. Normal maps, what they do is they're gonna take this really flat looking, uh, character, and what we're gonna do is add a normal map node, plug color into color, and plug normal into normal of the principal BSDF, and it's gonna look a little bit weird at first, and that's because we need to go to the color space, switch to non-color, drag this back. Uh, normal maps from Modern Warfare specifically, I don't know how many other CODs, but I would double check if I were you. Uh, if you look really closely at the details, the normal maps are actually backwards, and the way you fix this is by pressing Shift A uh, under the nodes, uh, Shift A search. Uh, we're going to add an RGB curve, plug that in, and go to the green channel by clicking on G, and just drag this to invert it. And basically, for anyone who's not in the know, what a normal map does is it's going to take this, uh, you know, pretty simple looking mesh. If we go into tab, we can see that it's actually just made up of this many vertices. What this is going to do is it's going to tell Blender how light should interact with the simplified geometry of this relatively low poly mesh and achieve the detail of a high poly mesh with zero computational cost, basically. That's why we love, we stand normal maps in this house because it adds so much detail for such little computational costs. That's why they're so popular in games, both AAA and non-AAA. Now that we have that um, applied, we have three textures left, and that would be the occlusion map, the, that's not it. Um, you'll see that that's like one of the thermal uh, textures, which can be easily confused with the specular map and the, uh, if we look for it, the metallic map. And there's three way, there's three different black and white maps. I know it might be a little bit confusing looking, but they're actually, fairly easy to identify. So here's how you tell the difference between these three maps. 
uh, right here we're looking at the specular which controls how matte or shiny your model is going to be and usually they look like a grayscale version of your image and then we have the occlusion map which is not this one um, but this one right here and basically you can identify this one because it usually has a white background with black almost gray details that are really feathery and that's because it's occlusion is another word for shadow it's a shadow map and then the metallic map usually has a pitch black background where only the parts that are supposed to be metallic are colored in so that's how you identify the different uh textures if they're not properly labeled sometimes when you export them they'll be labeled sometimes they won't in my experience with um the current build of greyhound and with modern warfare 3 they're not going to be labeled so you're going to be able to identify them just by looking at them and you know maybe looking up reference images for what textures are which but let's just drag all these into blender real quick starting with the specular and i've noticed um with specular in particular it's the only other one we're going to have to switch to non-color um and then we're going to drag out the color uh we're going to do an invert color node so make sure the factor is set to one and then drag that into the roughness that's how i get the most accurate results when i'm working with uh you know stuff that i've extracted from warzone because if you just plug this texture in straight out the box, it's going to look weird. So for example, let's see how that looks. Not good. Homelander is not this shiny. So obviously, uh, you can see here we're getting a inverted version of it where in Blender interprets white as, you know, matte. And the way that it's, you know, made for whatever engine, the IW9 engine or whatever for uh, Warzone, it's, you know, it's not the same. They don't use the same engine. So you will have to do this adjustment manually like I just showed you and you'll get pretty accurate uh, roughness results. Now we got two more to go. Two, two more. Dos mas. Um, so we can go to the metallic map next. Which we're just going to drag in like normal. It's the second of three of the black and white textures. I really hope I did a good job explaining them so that you don't get them mixed up if you have to figure out which is which. But this one, in my experience, you can just plug it into metallic. Now, if we if we look at the map real quick using Node Wrangler, you're going to see the parts that are white are going to be metallic. And we can double check that by looking in here. And we can see that the gold like filigree on his suit is going to be, you know, a shinier gold, which is exactly what we want from a metal map. And then the occlusion map, which is kind of funky. Like I said before, it's the one with the white background and like kind of feathery details because it's a shadow map. And what this does is we're just going to drag it into Blender. This is something that you overlay with your color texture in order to give an illusion of depth in the crevices of your model. And it really helps with real time render engines like Eevee or, you know, video games in general that don't have RTX turned on. It helps you get a lot more convincing and like uh like almost photo real not really it just adds a lot more detail uh it helps you get some really nice results so what we're gonna do is we're going to drag the uh color first and add a mix color node drag the color from the occlusion map right here you can see that into the b slot and we're going to drag the color map that we extracted and brought in first into the a slot now what we're going to do is switch the color on the second part to multiply and then set the factor to something like 0.7 and what you're gonna see is if we just leave it shaded like this if we increase this the shadows from the occlusion map get overlaid so you know 0 0.7 0 0.8 honestly this part's a little bit overkill you know it's optional in my opinion you don't really need it but if we just plug that into base color now you're gonna get a, you know, slightly better, more convincing, more photoreal-esque result. And all you need to do is do that for the rest of the model, and boom, you have a character that's textured and ready to render and put on thumbnails of your Call of Duty videos or make fan animations or whatever. And also, so next up, the only thing that I haven't showed you yet is how to do hair cards, um, which if we go to the character's head, real quick now this is a bit of a pain since the head and the body are separate but i gotta show you how to do hair cards i don't like i wouldn't know what to do if my character didn't have hair cards i would whew, have an aneurysm it would look horrible but uh we're just gonna open up the head real quick go into images and i'm just going to drag the actually they're right here i don't even need to uh use caught image util but um basically there's a secret sixth texture called an alpha texture or a uh what else is it called 
uh, transparency texture. Uh, basically, it's a black and white texture that tells Blender what parts of your model should be see-through and how see-through it could be. So it's a fourth black and white texture that you're going to want to drag in. Um, so if we just go to whatever part of the character we're clicking on right now and preview it, this is... and just match it up. So we see what we're working with here. We go over and this looks like it to me. Just drag it in and do a quick comparison. You gotta make sure it's the same texture, but it's like a black and white version of it with a black background, white strands, and that's gonna be your hair card alpha texture. And there's gonna be different ones for different parts of the model for the most part, like the eyebrows, eyelashes, and different parts of hair will have different ones. Make sure you match them up correctly to get the right look. But if we compare them real quick, right here, yeah, you can see down in the viewport, uh, it's identical. So what we're gonna do is we're going to drag the color of this into the alpha of the principled BSDF. Now, right now it's not going to look any different, but what we're going to want to do is go over into the material tab and go down to the settings and set the blend mode for the hair from opaque to alpha hash and the shadow mode from opaque to alpha hash and boom, you get hair that looks like hair. And with hair, I don't usually go into a lot of effort with it. Like sometimes I'll have normal maps and roughness maps and everything. But for hair, you can usually just get away with sliding up the, the roughness a lot and, you know, leaving it at that. Honestly, that's all I do. But, um, you know, if you want to go the extra mile, you're more than welcome to. Now, if you go ahead and do what I just did for those parts of the model on the rest of the body, you'll end up with the results that look like this. Alrighty, that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed. Uh, feel free to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff if you liked it. Uh, also, join the Discord and share your results, you know, the renders and all that fun stuff that you make with this. Camera's lagging a bit. Oh no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I would love to see what you guys are doing. I love reading comments and seeing what you guys are up to with my tutorials. And, uh, you know, without further ado, hope you're having a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be. And adios.